so. In other words, Muslims don't deny the crucifixion. Muslims think that it was Judas Iscariot or somebody else who was crucified. No one denies the crucifixion. The crucifixion is a historic reality. The question becomes, is who are you putting on that cross? Is who on the cross your Judas Iscariot who cannot save? Or is the one who is on the cross the king of the Jews? Because Palestinian Christians claim that they also believe in the crucifixion of Jesus. But the question is, who do they place on that cross? The place on the cross is a Palestinian revolutionist. Hanan Ashrawi used to say, Jesus was a Palestinian revolutionist from my country. Many of the Palestinian Christian websites depict Jesus with, on the cross with barbed wires. And he uh, had refugee camps surrounding him because he came to liberate the Palestinians from the evil Zionist. You tell me if these are Christians. Because the Antichrist wants to also divide that land we call Israel. He wants to divide the land, it's very clear. He divides the land for gain. So I argue always with my Christian Arabs, if you want to divide the land of Israel, and the Antichrist wants to divide the land of Israel, and Christ condemns the division of the land of Israel, which side are you on? You cannot be on the side of Christ and on the side of Antichrist both at the same time. It doesn't work. You have to make a choice. Then you see many things in the Bible. In fact, Muslims, Ka'ab ibn al-Ahbar reported in the Hadith by the Prophet Muhammad that the way you recognize the coming of the Muslim Messiah, the Mahdi, is that he rides on a white horse. Who rides on a white horse? No. In the book of Revelation, the rider of the white horse is the Antichrist who brings false peace. In fact, they refer to the book of Revelation of the Christians to say our Mahdi is in the Christian book. He is the rider of the white horse in the book of Revelation. Everything was in reverse. Both the Mahdi will change the laws of the world and the biblical Antichrist will change the laws of the world. We see this all around in the world when we see the Muslims being active. What are the Muslims doing? What are the Muslims fighting about? What do the Muslims want to do in the United States of America? It's very simple. They want to change your constitution and establish an Islamic constitution. They want to change the laws of the land and establish Islamic Sharia law. So in essence, Muslims are set up for a religion of the Antichrist. Whether you believe that Islam plays a major role in biblical prophecy, or whether Islam plays the most major role in biblical prophecy matters little to me. What matters is that Islam and all scholars today agree. I haven't met a single Bible prophecy scholar who doesn't agree that Islam plays a major role in Bible prophecy because all the nations that are mentioned in the Bible that God mentions by name that he destroys all of them are Muslim nations. In fact, both the Mahdi and the Antichrist will advance against the strongest of nations with the name of a foreign God. And that is in the book of Daniel chapter 11. And I hope you brought your Bibles. Do not leave without your stinger missile. In chapter 11, verses very rarely ever discussed. Verse 39. What does it say? In the whole chapter, it's talking about the Antichrist. It says in verse 36, Then the king shall do according to his own will. He shall exalt and magnify himself above every god. He shall speak blasphemies against the god of gods. What is blasphemy? A blasphemy is to deny the edicts of God. Because in America, when I say the word blasphemy, they think it's the G word. No, it's more than that. 
If you deny God's edicts, you've blasphemed God. If you deny God's ordinances that he ordained, you blaspheme God. If you deny God's prophetic word, you blaspheme God. If you deny Israel's right to exist, you blaspheme God. It's that simple. He will speak blasphemies against the God of gods and shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished for what has been determined shall be done. He shall regard neither the God of his fathers, depends on what translation you're looking at. Some say the gods of his fathers. Some say the God of his fathers. He doesn't honor the God of his ancestors long time ago. Just as Moses was addressed by God. I'm the God of your ancestors. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So his ancestors had pagan deities or uh, idol worship. And he denies all these idols. And in their stead, he replaces them to honor a God of fortresses. Verse 38. But in their place, there's multiple idols. He shall honor a God of war. A God of fortresses, no one can deny, means God of war. A singular God that is a God of war or a God of battle. Americans have now been introduced after 9-11 to jihad. Every American knows what jihad means. It doesn't mean inner struggle. It doesn't mean this self-struggle. It's like the Mein Kampf struggle. Struggle against who? Struggle against the Jews. Struggle against the Christians. Today it's a struggle against the West. Why? Because the Prophet of Islam said, I have been ordered to fight until all nations say there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. I have been ordered to fight in battle all the nations. And look what it says. Thus, he shall act against the strongest fortresses with a foreign God. Think about that. He acts against the strongest of fortresses. Strongest of fortresses. I don't know if I spelled fortresses correctly. English is my second language. I have an excuse. <laughs> Who is the strongest of all fortresses in the world today no one can deny it you whipped the Japanese you whipped the Russians you're the strongest of all fortresses in the whole world he will declare declare war against America so if Antichrist rules America and rules the whole world why is it saying that he declares war against the strongest armies the strongest nations of the world what else does that mean that also means that the Antichrist is not the strongest nation in the world. In fact, Osama bin Laden, Ahmadinejad, already declared war on America and Israel. And are they stronger than America? The United States of America can squish these countries like a worm. They can squish Hezbollah like a worm. Not a problem. So it doesn't say that the Antichrist rules the whole world. He declares war against the strongest of all nations. Then he will divide the land for gain. So he advances on the, on the strongest nations as to advance. He says advances this God. He advances his God, this foreign God, by the means of war. And that's exactly what the Muslims are doing. Islam is a system of antichrist. Because it does want to change the times and it does want to change the laws and it denies the right for women because it's very clear he will not honor the desire of women. Western interpreters say the desire of women to bring forth the Messiah so he doesn't honor the Messiah who is the desire of every woman. And I've asked that question in America and I've you know, broken the Guinness Book of Records or no woman raising her hands when I asked the question. Is there any woman here desiring to bring forth, to produce a child, the Messiah? Anybody? I mean, there's one in every crowd. It's usually the guys, the gals know that not to raise their hands. Sometimes you ask questions, it's usually a guy that raises his hand. As I always say, man thinks he's smart, but woman is smarter. 
So what is that with that old 